Hello, good evening. Good evening, Mario, Cristina, and Marilyn. Welcome to our class. How are you doing today? Good evening. Good evening, Cristina. How are you? Good evening. Good evening, Marilyn. How are you today? I'm so tired. Yeah. Tired? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And was your dog passed away yesterday? Or no, the day before yesterday, right? No. No. No, creo que no sé quién era. <laughs> Pero sí era otra compañera. <laughs> no. No está cansada de llorar. <laughs> okay. Well, nice that it's alive. Did you have a good day yesterday? So, so. So, so. Did you celebrate? Yeah, but then I don't have my mom with me. I'm sorry to hear that. My mother is, um, she passed away as well. So um, she's not with me. So, but I try to celebrate with my kids and my sister. And yes, <laughs> it's hard, but we have to get yeah. used to that. <laughs> yeah, in fact, is the um, son's birthday. Ah, oh, it's your son's birthday? Yeah. The same day? Yeah. Yesterday. Yesterday. Oh, yeah, so you, yesterday. Have, you have a, a reason to celebrate. Yeah. Okay. That's good to hear that. Okay, I have more people here. Magdiel, uh, Cecia, I guess, and Melanie. I think that most of you have completed the platform, at least the first section, which is good, but we're still missing some people. Try to complete the exercise as soon as possible. And if you need help, remember that we are a chat away, so you can chat and ask for help if, if you need it. Okay, so thank you for being on time. I already shared the presentation with you to the, through the WhatsApp group. So we're going to begin the class in honor to the people who is early today. Let me start sharing my screen. Mm, see, we will start with this uh, vocabulary exercise. I'm sharing my screen with you. So mm, let me make this bigger for you. Okay, here we have a list of procedures on page 18 of your material. Those are some uh, restaurant procedures. The first one in letter A, we have uh, plowing food. Letter B, hand washing. Letter C, sanitizing. Letter D, food storage. Letter E, purchase. Letter F, tasting method. So what we're going to do is to match the procedures with the descriptions that you have there. You may want to use your dictionary or maybe you can try just by uh, guessing, trying to um, get them correctly without the dictionary. You can do that as well. So I'll give you time for you to match the procedures with the description, and then we will check together.
finished? Or do you need more time? Can we check now what you have in the first one? Wash your hand and forearm with soap. Use brush to clean under your fingernail and dry. What procedure is that one? Letter C. Letter B. Letter B, yes. Letter B, hand washing. Now, let's continue with, take a sample of the food you want to taste on a spoon. Put a sample on a second spoon away from the cooking area and taste the product. Letter, letter F. Letter F, correct, my testing method. Buy packaged food only from licensed suppliers. Letter E, purchase. Letter E, correct, purchase. And let's continue. To let frozen food become warmer until it is ready to cook. Letter A. Letter A, that is correct. Now, employees who receive and a storage food organized item in the correct place to avoid bacteria. Letter D, food storage. That is correct, excellent. And um, finally, equipment is washed, rinsed, and disinfected after each dish is prepared. Letter C, sanitizing. Sanitize letter C. Very good job. Excellent. Thank you so much for sharing your answers with us. So in case that you missed any of them, I am writing them here. I'm typing them here. Um, if this was D and C. And this one, Z. C. Okay. Okay, this is what you should have. In case that you miss uh, Mario's responses, they were correct. And this is B, F, E, A, D, and Z. Any questions? Does everybody have the same answers? Okay, I guess you do have the same answers. Okay, now it says a uh, paywork in Paris, choose two of the procedures you follow every day at your workplace. Create a mini poster to present both procedures. Um, if we choose two procedures here, do you follow any of these procedures? Do you? Do you follow any of these procedures? I don't, to be honest. The only that I follow is the hand washing. <laughs> what about you? Do you follow any of these procedures? At your workplace? Hmm? 
Maybe you don't. Okay, so we will uh, let that for later. And we can go ahead and, and continue with this conversation. In this one, we will describe the steps of a procedure. Everybody follows procedures that can be at the workplace or every day uh, on, on a daily basis. It's procedures all the time, maybe at home, maybe at work, but we do follow procedures. Uh, we're going to read this conversation first. You can repeat that for me. You can do it with your microphone off at home and then see if we have a um, new vocabulary. And this is a conversation between Javier and manager Moore. And it said, sir, I forgot how to process a payment. All right. First, you give the options to pay in cash or credit card. After that, take the payment and put it in the register or you will slide the card through the card reader. Then, the register points the receipt and you give it back to the customer. Finally, the customer signs a receipt and you keep a copy. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Is there any question about vocabulary or pronunciation in this one? No, teacher. No? Okay, thank you so much for confirming. Um, do we have a volunteer to role play this conversation? Marilyn, thank you. Who wants to help Marilyn? Uh, me. Thank you, Melanie. Okay. Empiezo usted o, o yo, Melanie? Uh, I'm a star. Uh, sir, I forgot how to process a payment. All right. But you gave the option to. To pay, uh -huh. uh -huh. I'm sorry. The option to pay in cash or credit card. After that, take the payment and put it in the register or you slide the card through the card reader. Then the register prints the receipt and you give, you give it back to the customer. Finally, the customer sings the receipt and you keep a copy. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Okay, excellent. Excellent job. Thank you, Melanie and Marilyn. Thank you for your participation. And do we have two more participants who want to role play? I have Mario. And who wants to help Mario? Me, teacher. Okay, thank you, Hazel. Ladies first. Ladies first. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. Sir, I forgot how to process a, pa a payment. Uh -huh. All right. First, you give the option to the pay in cash or credit card. After that, take the payment and put in the register on your slide the card through the card reader. Then, the register prints the receipt, receipt and you'll give it back to the customer. Finally, the customer signs the receipt and a copy. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Excellent. You did it great. Thank you so much for your participation. And just two more. Do we have two more? Uh, 
Okay, so we're going to stop here. I know this is kind of easy. So as you can see, uh, we have some words here in bold, and this is the topic about. Uh, we're going to um to be practicing this sequence word. And as you can see here in the introduction, we use the sequence adverse first, next, then, and finally to describe the order in which two or more actions happen. For example, making an omelet. First, I break the eggs. Then, I heat the butter in a pan. Next, I add the egg. Finally, I eat the omelet with toast. Questions? No questions? Okay, for who wants to read this one? A volunteer to read this slide? Volunteer to read. Me? Thank you. Um, we use a comma after first, next, then, and finally. When they introduce the sentences that describes the action. First, for an action that happens before any others, we can also use first at the end of the sentences. I have a lot of work to do. First, I will make a cup of tea. I will make a cup of tea first. As I eat. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much. Okay, Mario, do you want to read next? Okay. Next and then. Next and then. Can both be for an action that happens after another action would be usually used. Next, for an action that happens immediately after another action, or as soon as possible. We can also use next and the end of the sentences. I went to Bolivia on holiday. Next, I have to go to Brazil. I'm eating breakfast now. I will clean the kitchen next. Excellent. Thank you so much for helping us. Uh, we have more about then. Who wants to read then? A volunteer to read a then? Okay. Thank you, Marilyn. Okay. Then for an action that happens after another action, if it's not in immediate, 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 we can use and then without a comma. Sarah is doing her degree. Then she wants to be a lawyer. Sarah will probably not be a lawyer in Maryland after she got her degree. They went shopping in the morning and then they went to the zoo. We don't know if they went to the zoo in Maryland after they went shopping. Excellent. Thank you so much, Marilyn. Thank you for reading. Uh, finally, I volunteer to read finally. I volunteer to read about finally. Uh, me? Thank you, Melanie. Uh, finally, for the action that happens at the end, after any others or after a long time. We can use finally before the verb without a comma. Uh, for example, I worked all evening. All evening. evening. Finally, 
I went to bed at 11 p.m. I worked all evening and I, and I finally went to bed at 11 p.m. After five, after five years, I finally sold the house. Excellent. Thank you so much for reading. Now, as you can see, we are going to be practicing the sequence word. We have described the uses of them. And now we can go and practice in this link. But before that, let me check attendance. We're going to check attendance for the first time tonight. So remember, if it is possible for you to turn on your cameras and say present when you hear your names. Abigail Elizabeth Flores. Present teacher. Thank you, Abigail. Abigail Mejia Mendoza. Present. Thank you. Balmore Alexander Marroquín. Balmore Alexander Marroquín. Present teacher. Thank you, Balmore. Carlos Emilio Coto. Present teacher. Thank you, Carlos. Eh, Carlos Humberto Estrada. Present teacher. Thank you, Carlos. Cecia Noemí Ramos Rivas. Present teacher. Thank you so much. Let's see. Francisco Ernesto Acuña Rivera. Francisco Ernesto. Hazel Vanessa Mengíbar. Present. Thank you, Hazel. Janet Fernanda. Julissa Yamilet Villalta. Julissa Yamilet. Carla Ivania Anaya. Carla Ivania Anaya. Okay. Um, Catherine Beatriz Rivera. Catherine Beatriz Rivera. Luis Javier Castillo. Luis Javier Castillo. Martiel Esaú García. Present teacher. Thank you, Martiel. Marilyn Alejandra Grande. Present. Thank you, Marilyn. Mario Ernesto Ramírez. Present. Thank you so much. Melanie Alexandra Martinez. Present. Thank you so much. Mirna Janet Angel. Present teacher. Thank you, Mirna. Santos Cristina Cerritos. Present teacher. Thank you, Cristina. Victor Noé Bonilla. Present teacher. Thank you, Victor. Okay, thank you so much for confirming that you are here. And uh, now we're going to proceed with the exercise. Remember, you will click on the link that you have on the presentation. And let me show it again. Okay, here we have this link. And at the beginning, we have what we just read, okay? And then you have a couple of exercise about the sequence adverbs. We are going to do them together in groups. So I'm going to create a breakout room so that you can solve the exercises together. Let's see, give me one second. I will enable the um, option so that you can share first. And there it is. And now I'm going to create a breakout room.
Okay, ready.
All right, everybody's back again here. So, how was the exercise? Was it easy? Uh, it was difficult. Did you finish? Oh, really? You didn't finish? Um, oh, sorry. Um, I can rejoin the groups. Is it okay? Is it okay if I rejoin the groups? Yeah. My group, I finish. Oh, your group finished. And all correct. Yeah. All correct. Excellent. And the rest of the groups? Finish. Um. Okay. Very good. So most of you finished. And if you couldn't, uh, there you have the link. So you can um, continue practicing in, in there. So that would be great if you can uh, finish on your own. And uh, we're all correct. I heard one group said that, yes, you got all the answers correct. And the rest of you? I guess they were correct. <laughs> no. OK. And uh, let me continue sharing with you. Uh, this is pretty easy, right? It's not really complicated. Um, now that you practice in this, uh, we have to answer these questions. Now, remember the conversation? We have to, um, to answer. What steps does Manager Moore give Javier to process payment? And what does Manager Moore use to order sequence the event? This is here in the conversation. Paying cash or credit card is basically to copy all this information. So I think that um, you can do it. But yes, in number four, we have to work on that. That's, um, let's see the instructions. Do you ever meet difficult customers? Do you remember that um, on our previous class, we were discussing how to deal with difficult customers, right? With IRAT or difficult customers. So we have some vocabulary in that presentation. Let's choose one of the situations below and list and describe five steps you could use to deal with that difficult customer. Then present your process to the class. Let's read the situations. Who wants to read the situations? Volunteer. I volunteer to read the situations. There are five. I volunteer to read. Okay, thank you. From the say a customer standard because it's good. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes, please. Number one, a customer is angry because the was not delivered on time. Mm -hmm. Number two, a customer is very aggressive to one on, of your employees. Number three, a customer says he found a toothpick in his food and that he will not pay for the food. Number four, a customer is calling upset because he received the wrong delivery order. Number five, a group of customers are getting upset because the cashier is too slow. Okay, good. Thank you so much for reading, Mario. So as you can see, there are five situations. And in our previous class on Tuesday, we were discussing how to deal with difficult customers. Do you remember a couple of steps or things that we discussed? What do you remember?
And I remember. Okay, so no worries. We will go ahead and work this in groups. You have to choose one of those situations and um, make a presentation. If you don't have enough uh, resources or it is difficult for you to make a PowerPoint presentation, don't worry. You can take notes on your notebook and then present your work to the class. So uh, the first step is to choose one of those situations. Like for example, um, maybe we in the group choose the situation number three. A customer says he found a toothpick in his booth and that he will not pay for this food. What would we do first? Maybe first, let the customer explain the situation and listen to him carefully, etc. Or if you will watch the cameras <laughs> to make sure that he didn't put the toothpick on the food. <laughs> so yes, you have to choose a situation and um, describe the steps that you would follow to solve it. And remember to use the sequence word first, then after that, finally, etc. Is it clear what you're going to do? You have any question? No questions? Claro, como no. Okay. <laughs> That means probably not very clear. Um, el martes estuvimos viendo como pasos que se pueden o acciones que se pueden tomar con un cliente difícil o que esté enojado. Y ahí pues eh, encontramos algún poco de vocabulario. Por ejemplo, como dijimos que era como dejar la, al cliente que se desahogue. ¿Se acuerdan? ¿Cómo era desahogarse? Se les borró la memoria. Vent. Vent. Dijimos que era vent. Entonces ese podría ser el primer paso, digamos, dejar el... Let the customer vent. Listen to the customer carefully, acknowledge that we are uh, sorry for the situation, and things like that. Y luego así, o sea, tienen que hacer una presentación. Primero escoger la situación y describir el paso a paso que ustedes eh, seguirían para solventar la situación. Pueden hacer eh, una presentacioncita o en un documento de Word. Eh, lo importante es que usen las sequence words first. Then, after that, finally, etc. When you finish, um, I'll give you some time. When you finish, we're going to get back to the main section and you will present to the class. I will uh, stop sharing and we'll proceed with the breakout rooms.
y yo no sé si entendí mal, pero era como coger dos situaciones de las que estaban en la pantalla que estaba compartiendo ella, era como, um, creo que en la clase pasada, bueno, yo no, no puse mucha atención en la clase pasada, pero creo que les habían explicado como qué hacer en situaciones como cuando, si mal no entendías, como cuando un cliente, este, y no sé, se enfada o algo así por algún servicio que no se le daba bien, Entonces creo que es como exponer dos situaciones de esas. Creo que entendí bien. Yo así entendí, no sé. Yes, that is correct. I was in mute. Okay. Okay. Estaba buscándoles la presentación para que pues Bueno, ahí lo tienen en el, en el, eh, en su WhatsApp. Tienen aquí, ahorita lo puede compartir, solo déjenme descargarla nuevamente. Yo, este tenía siempre que, al menos cuando estoy desde mi teléfono, no las puedo abrir porque dice que no son compatibles con mi celular. Entonces mm. no lo puedo abrir. Incluso ahora me costó un montón. entrar a la plataforma para continuar las tareas no sé por qué ok mm. y si bueno puede hacerlo desde el teléfono o si no alguien más del grupo puede compartir pero sí de la presentación que les hablaba era de esta que ahí pues pueden agarrar ideas verdad eh, ahí se la estoy compartiendo eh, decía Quiero ver este. Um, listen, take note, stay committed to the customer. Algunas les pueden servir. Eh, y es for encourage venting, que dijimos que dejarlo o decirle, dígame qué pasó, o animarlo a que le diga que se desahogue. Vent es desahogarse. Listen, don't interrupt, etc. Use empathy. Apologize blamelessly on behalf of the company. Offer to help. Esos son unos eh, ask questions. Um, pues esto solo les puede servir como para agarrar ideas eh, de qué hacer. Luego decirle al cliente qué plan, cuál es el plan para resolverlo. Eh, preguntarle si está de acuerdo. Agradecerle, etcétera. Este se los mencionaba solo como para que agarren idea y, y ustedes pueden agregar más cosas que harían dependiendo de la situación. No sé si alguien más quiere compartir o. o... Y eso está en el WhatsApp, todo eso. Eso está en el WhatsApp. Uh -huh. Esta la envié creo que el lunes o martes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Está antes de la que envía ahora. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Lo pueden ver desde ahí. Es nomás como para que agarren ideas, porque a veces cuesta un poquito arrancar. Y ya luego con eso, pues ustedes le van dando forma. Eh, pues lo primero sería escoger una situación, ¿verdad? Sobre cuál van a ofrecer. Sí. Podría ser cualquiera de las que usted puso ahí, ¿verdad? Cualquiera de las cinco que están ahí en el material. Uh -huh. okay. que son estas ahí están eh, de cualquiera de esos a customer is angry because his food was not delivered on time a customer is very aggressive to one of your employees ahí ustedes pónganse de acuerdo cuál situación van a escoger y a esa situación dar eh, solución primero haría esto luego aquello Usando las, eh, las, puede ser usando estas palabritas, first, then, next, finally, etc. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, let you work. Okay. Este, utilizamos esa, la primera. 
un cliente donde dice que el cliente está enojado porque no, su comida no fue entregada a tiempo. Quiero esperar un segundo, me captura de pantalla. The customer is angry because his food was not delivered in time. Bye. Bye, está bien. Este, no sé dónde hacemos este, el resumen. Lo puedo digitar yo desde un Word. Ah, ok. La primera dijeron, ¿verdad? Sí, la primera situación. So, entonces sería, eh, primero sería como eh, simular la llegada de la persona al restaurante o algo así, no sé. Solo que en esa creo que, ah, si, si no leí mal, es como que um, um, dice, his food was not delivered on time. Entonces me imagino que pide a domicilio. Ah, no. ah sí, ¿no? perdón. Sí, va. Es que estaba viendo otro. Ajá. Sí, así va. Uh -huh. sí. Okay. Pero sería como describir toda la escena, ¿verdad? Sí. Pues yo creería o, o creería, es que. Describir es que el punto, como el punto y luego. Ajá, dar como darle la... solución al problema, que en Ajá. ese momento, digamos que si usted estuviera pasando como por esa situación, digamos que usted en vez de ser el cliente que pidió la comida fuera la persona a la que le toca resolverle a ese cliente entonces cómo usted le resolvería a ese cliente que está enojado porque no le llegó el delivery a tiempo ¿Y qué le pongo entonces? ¿Qué, qué le diríamos? ¿Qué haríamos? Bueno, yo creo que primero, yo creo que primero quizás sería como este, um, como tratar de tranquilizarlo, porque obviamente está enojado, ¿va? y pedirle una disculpa, pues sí, porque ya, no sé cómo tratar, ajá, primero diría que como, fuera como tranquilizarlo, porque en ese momento pues la persona está molesta. Uh, how do you say tranquilizar? <risa> Quiero ver cómo. ¿Cómo digo la no Sería como de escucharlo de... primero. O de escuchar. Listen. First. Eh, I listen to the customer. And I uh, use it. Escuchar la situación. Costume in his, his problem about the delivery 
about uh, about the order about the order. And then when try try to to try to fix. Let's fix the problem. Let's try to fix the problem. Mm -hmm. Benny? ¿Cómo sería inmediatamente? Inmediatamente. Lo googleé. Dice Plante de que tiene que grabar un video porque se quedó en. en en matemática. Es in media live. que tiene que grabar un video así. Es y buenas tardes. Sí, y vamos a presentar el y media live. Resolver un problema. Así. Para los que se quedaron. Por ejemplo, algo de los quiero decir un restaurante para hacerle algo de comida, o sea, algún platillo exquisito, algo de Sí, un restaurante, pero un producto de, de la empresa, un producto de la casa. Okay. O un descuento también. <ríe> también es un descuento. Le caería súper. A discount. A discount. Uh -huh. sí. Let's... A ver si nos quiere comprar. <risa> Discount. Ya le pongo la presentación. Discount ever. Get mm, over. Pero este es como agresivo, ¿verdad? Sí. Un cliente agresivo. No me sale la imagen.
que no me agarra. De verdad no me agarra. Ahí está. Espérenme, le voy a poner la... Sería esa la que hicimos. First, ask the customer what's the reason be angry. Then, allow the customer to vent. Use empathy all the time. After that, apologize placement of behalf of the company. And finally, offer to help or give a discount. Está bien. Excelente. Aquí viene el estrecho más agresivo. ¿va? Este está más agresivo. Vamos a ver si me sale. aquí porque si no me hace desastre <risa> ay no está más bonito se identifica con el tema sí ya lo quería agarrar de <risa> el buchito ok let's check right in it will be first ask the customer what's the reason Um, I, to be angry, I to be angry, quizás para estar enojado. To be angry, to be angry, or because of what he is angry, por la cual está enojado. Puede ser cualquiera de las dos. Eh, estamos bien, y luego la última: offer to help or give a discount. Le falta la R, or give a discount. <laughs> But then, excellent. I liked it. <laughs> Thank you, teacher. Se fue chiquita, mira. Se me muestra más chiquita. Ahí terminamos. Chao. Okay, let's listen to room number one, Abigail Elizabeth, Carlos Humberto, Sergio Ramos, Cristina, Matiel, and Victor. Mm. Ahorita.
no sé si Víctor o Abigail quieren leer. Um, what is the situation? I guess it's in the first slide. Creo que en la primera slide tiene la situación, ¿verdad? Oh, no? Yes, yes. Bueno, no, no, no me dijeron nada los compañeros. A customer is very aggressive to one of your employees. This is the situation. And the solution is first, ask the customer what's the reason to be angry. Ah, Cristina, no sé si lo quiere leer. Ya empezó usted, entonces. ¿Dónde terminó? La primera, he leído nada más, Cristina. Si gusta, siga con las demás. Then allow the customer to vent. Just empathy all the time. After that, apologize. Plus, blandness. Esa palabra, teacher, ¿cómo se pronuncia? Blandnessly. 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 On the part of the company. Finally, Oscar, to help or cheer at this point. Okay, finally. Fine. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your presentation and for sharing with us. You did an excellent job. You did a very, very good job. I like it. I really like it. <laughs> and that was funny too. Okay, let's listen to Palmone, Hazel, Catherine, Mario, and Abigail. In room two. Teacher, I'm sorry in the group. Mm -hmm. No, no, I speak. Oh, no, nobody. Okay. I'm, I work. Okay. Okay. Um, number one, a customer is angry. I'm sorry, teacher, no hice presentación porque estoy en el teléfono. Yes, a customer is angry. Uh -huh. uh, okay. A customer is angry because his food was not delivering on time. Mm -hmm. First, you have to... Uh, First, you apologize to the customer. Mm -hmm. Apologize? To the customer. Uh -huh. Then you have to give me a starters or desserts. Give the customer starters or dessert. Yes. And finally, you appreciate the understanding. Okay, everybody has uh, great things. Okay, uh, a customer says, says he found a toothpick in his food and that uh, he will not pay to the food. First, you ask him to show to the topic. Then you apologize for what happened. And finally, you give you have to give a dessert. Ah, okay, a free dessert? Yes. Excellent. Yes. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. Only that. Yes. Okay. Oh, Mario, thank you so much for share with us. Mario? Okay, uh, good. Uh, a uh, customer say he found a toothpick in in his food and that will be no paid for the food. First, listen carefully to carefully? what carefully to what the client tells you. 
then accept his complaint and give him so a solution. Next time, the request this finally. Uh, the request this finally had a set as a courtesy. The most important thing is that the customer experience is not affected and with this fixed whole minimize the damage. Only that. Oh, okay, excellent. A very good job. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good job, Mario. Anybody else in the group? Anybody else? Okay, no worries. Let's go with room number three, Carlos Cotto, Francisco, Janet, Marilyn, and Melanie. Maybe we didn't do a presentation, but I write in a word. That's okay. Uh, we use the first uh, sentence or uh, example. So, um, and, um, and first, um, I listen to the customer and his problem about the order. Uh, then we try to fix the fix the problem in, immediately. Immediately. If the immediately. If the customer continue hungry, uh, we can ask to keep calm and give solutions. For example, in this case, uh, the company will assume or oh, assume, assume. assume 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 the cost of its product product due to the delay, and probably uh, we can we can come to an agreement so that we he visit visit us give and give him a free dinner for him and his family sounds like a great solution and you did a very good use of the uh, sequencing word thank you so much for sharing excellent job okay well, let us continue here with the presentation so that we can continue our practice. Um, something went wrong. Just one moment. It's showing open. Just let me close the presentation and reopen it. Maybe that works. Okay, I think that now you can see the screen. Okay, as uh, so you see, we have been using the adverse and transition expressions. And as we studied before, transitions word are used to connect phrases or sentences. They express a sequence and progress from one idea to the next. When these words are used at the beginning of a sentence, they are followed by a comma, as we studied before. First, for example, first, comma, you have to give options to the customer. After that, comma, you have to take the payment. Or afterwards, you have to take the payment. 
meaning that you can use after that or afterwards, and they are the same. Then the register prints the receipt and you give it back to the customer. Finally, comma, the customer signs the receipt and you keep a copy. This is uh, what we discussed before. And then we have this exercise on page, uh, well, page 20, exercise six. It says, look at the box above and complete the following paragraph. Add punctuations where necessary. Okay, I guess that we start with first comma. You have to complete an analysis of the training needs of your employees and choose the processes you would like to improve in your company. Let's complete it and then you share. I'll give it time for you to complete it.
Have you finished? Five minutes, teacher, please. Okay, no problem. Finish teacher. Okay, would you like to share with us? Or read what you have? A volunteer to read? Feels, feels you have to complete an analysis of the trading needs of your employer. Ensure the process you would like to improve in your company, your company. After that, it is necessary to write the content in divide in the modules or chapters. Next, you need select a manual skill and decide if extra digital content is necessary. Finally, re Guys, revise, revise, revise the manner and print it. 
Excellent. Thank you so much for your job. Did you place a comma after the sequence word? Did you place the comma after the sequence word? Como no pudimos ver, pero espero que sí hayan ido poniendo la coma después de la sequence word. <laughs> Okay, good. Now about the process, um, we will practice this conversation. Uh, you have it in the group. So we will be discussing about food and processes to make receipts, but we will practice uh, pronunciation with this conversation that is related to our topics. So I want to share the, the audio program with you. One second. Okay, let me share out. Okay, here we have this conversation. It is related to our topic. So let's listen first and then you tell me if you have any question about vocabulary or pronunciation. Unit four. I've never heard of that. Page 22, exercise two, conversation. Have you ever? Part A, listen and practice. Hey, this sounds strange. Snails with garlic. Have you ever eaten snails? Yes, I have. I had them here just last week. Did you like them? Yes, I did. They were delicious. Why don't you try some? No, I don't think so. Have you decided on an appetizer yet? Yes. I'll have a small order of the snails, please. And you, sir? I think I'll have the fried brains. Fried brains? I've never heard of that. It sounds scary. Questions? How do many is strange? Strange. Yes. Uh, so the question is the pronunciation, strange, or the meaning? Meaning. Extraño. Uh -huh, it's, it's, it's strange, it's extraño. Eso es un extraño. Hey, this sounds strange. Thank you. You're welcome. And then snails. Did you know snails? Uñas? No. Caracoles. Caracoles. Snails? Ajá, uh -huh. caracoles. Yes, caracoles. Okay, I'm going to play the recording one more time and I'm going to pause so that you can repeat at home. Listen and then repeat. Unit 4. I've never heard of that. Page 22, Exercise 2, Conversation. Have you ever... Part A. Listen and practice. Hey, this sounds strange. Snails with garlic. Have you ever eaten snails? Yes, I have. I had them here just last week. Did you like them? Yes, I did. They were delicious. Why don't you try some?
No, I don't think so. Have you decided on an appetizer yet? Yes, I'll have a small order of the snails, please. And you, sir? I think I'll have the fried brains. Fried brains? I've never heard of that. It sounds scary. Okay. Um, are there three volunteers to role play the conversation? Me, teacher. Okay, I have Catherine, Abigail, and Mario. Okay. Yes, yo para que vayamos. En el personaje. Ah, yo voy a ser el mesero, entonces. Okay, you are the kid. <laughs> okay, good. Hey, hey, this song is strange. It's not with garlic. Have you ever seen, have you ever eaten a snail? Yes, I have. I have been here just the last week. Did you like them? Yes, I did. They were delicious. Why don't you try some? No, I don't, I don't think so. Have you decided on appetizer yet? Yes, I'll have a small order in the snails, please. And you, sir? I think I'll have the friend brains. Fried brains? I never heard of that. It sounds scary. Crazy. Oh, scary. <laughs> yeah, it sounds scary. All right. Thank you so much. You did a very, very good job with pronunciation. So let's listen to the rest of the conversation in part B and answer these two questions. How did Steve like the fried brains? Next question. What else did he order? Are the questions clear? Are the questions clear? Okay, let's listen and answer these two questions. Page 22, exercise two, part B. Listen to the rest of the conversation. How did Steve like the fried brains? What else did he order? Oh, good. Here comes our server now. Here are your snails. And for you, sir, the fried brains. Thank you. Mmm, these snails are delicious. How are the brains? Well, I think they're... Yuck. Oh, sorry. I guess brains are too strange for me. Um, I think I'm going to order something else, if you don't mind. Oh, sure. Go ahead. Excuse me. Yes? Um, I really don't care for this appetizer. Could you bring me something else? Yes, of course. What would you like instead? Try the snails. No, I don't think so. I'll tell you what. Just forget an appetizer for me and bring me a nice, juicy hamburger with french fries and a large soda. Did you get the information? Or do you want to listen again? One more time. One more time, please. Okay. 
Page 22, Exercise 2, Part B. Listen to the rest of the conversation. How did Steve like the fried brains? What else did he order? Oh, good. Here comes our server now. Here are your snails. And for you, sir, the fried brains. Thank you. Mmm, these snails are delicious. How are the brains? Well, I think they're... Yuck! Oh, sorry. I guess brains are too strange for me. Um, I think I'm going to order something else, if you don't mind. Oh, sure. Go ahead. Excuse me. Yes? Um, I really don't care for this appetizer. Could you bring me something else? Yes, of course. What would you like instead? Try the snails. No, I don't think so. I'll tell you what. Just forget an appetizer for me and bring me a nice, juicy hamburger with french fries and a large soda. Okay. How did Steve like the fried brain? No. He liked... Yeah, he didn't like them. Excellent. He didn't like them. What else did he order? Hamburger in French fries. In French fries. Okay, hamburger, French fries, and Mark Sola. Excellent, a large soda. Yes, that's what he ordered. Now, uh, let's continue here in our presentation. Now that we listen to this audio, uh, what else will we have next? Okay, here we have some vocabulary about uh, cooking methods. So we will need this vocabulary later. How do you cook the foods below? Check the methods that are most common in your country and then compare. Okay, methods. We have bake, boil, fry, grill, roast, stem. Is there any new one or that may be one that the meaning is not really clear? The last one, teacher, stem. What, is, what does it mean? Al vapor. Al vapor. Cocinado al vapor. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other? Boil is a repeat. Correct. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other? Teacher, grill yes. como barbacoa. Grill, uh -huh. um, no, grill es uh -huh, como un, una, um, grill es asar, asar, um, puede ser uh -huh, una, una barbacoa, es un asado. Una parrilla. Y más, es sí. como rostizado. Uh -huh. Grill es a la parrilla y roast rostizado, uh -huh. rostizar. Sure. What is the yeah. meaning of eggplant? Eggplant. Eggplant is la berenjena. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, and the exercise here is an ejercicio que bueno lo pueden hacer eh, por ahí. Um, tenemos el vocabulario de las methods, que ya vimos los métodos, and foods. 
Uh, we have fish, shrimp, eggs, chicken, beef, potatoes, onions, eggplants, and bananas. And we need to check um, which methods can we use with that food. For example, bake. I think that we can bake all of them. We can bake fish, shrimp, yes. eggs, chicken, beef, potatoes, onions, eggplants, and bananas. Yeah, we can bake all of them. Now, boil. Can we boil fish? Yes. Yes. Yes, in soup. I think that we can boil all of them, but bananas. Well, yes, we can boil bananas, right? With uh, yes. cinnamon for and breakfast. sugar for <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> yes, okay. Fry. Can we fry all those food? I think that we can fry all of them too. Onion, cebolla, verdad, teacher? Yes. Mm -hmm. Fry, yes. Yes, we can fry all of them, right? Yes. Grill. Can we grill all of those foods? I think that we can use all those methods and all those foods, right? Maybe with eggs, we always need a pan for for do it, but... Uh-huh, yeah, we cannot grill eggs, right? <laughs> yes, you're right. No problemos. No, okay. Yes, with eggs, I think this is the... the yes, you're right. Thank you. Mm. Any other? I think that we did, right? Okay, now we have uh, this. Uh, this is a receipt. Um, we're going to listen to it. Let me get to the audio. Oh, it's, it's time to check attendance. So we're going to check attendance and then we're going to listen to the receipt. Okay. Check. Okay, Abigail Elizabeth. Present. Thank you so much. Um, Abigail Mejia. Present. Thank you. Balmori Alexander. Present, teacher. Thank you. Carlos Emilio. Carlos Humberto. Present teacher. Yes, thank you. Cecia Noemi. Present teacher. Thank teacher, you. sorry, Carlos Emilio Coto, presente. Okay, thank you, Carlos. Francisco Ernesto. Hazel Vanessa. Present. Thank you. And Julissa Yamilet Villalta. Present. Thank you. Carla Ivania. Carla Ivania. Catherine Beatriz. Present, Miss. Thank you. Luis Javier. Mm. 
Martiel Esaú. Present teacher. Thank you. Marilyn Alejandra. Present. Thank you. Mario Ernesto. Present. Okay. Melanie Alexandra. Present. Thank you. Mirna Yanet. Present teacher. Thank you. Santos Cristina. And Victor Noé. Present teacher. Okay, thank you so much. Now, let's... Um, okay, I'm going to share the audio. Thank you, Cristina. Um, Okay, there we have. As you can see, it's a family receipt and we are here listening uh, for pronunciation, vocabulary. And also, as you can see here, we have the sequence words. First, then, next, after that, and finally. Let us listen to this. Let me check if I'm sharing. Yes. Page 25, Exercise 9, Perspectives. Family Cookbook, Part A. Listen to this recipe for Elvis Presley's favorite sandwich. Do you think this is a healthy snack? Peanut butter and banana. Three tablespoons peanut butter. One banana, mashed. Two slices of bread. Two tablespoons butter, melted. First, mix the peanut butter and mashed banana together. Then, lightly toast the slices of bread. Next, spread the peanut butter and banana mixture on the toast. After that, close the sandwich and put it in a pan with melted butter. Finally, fry the bread until it's brown on both sides. Okay. Vocabulary, pronunciation. How do you say mashed? Mashed. The meaning mashed. or the pronunciation? Mashed. Pronunciation. Um, mashed. The meaning. <laughs> Two. Mashed is um, um Eh, como molido o machacado, machacado, mashed. Mashed. Es machacado, machacado o molido, así como frito. Uh -huh. Hecho puré. Any other? How do you say lightly? The lightly. 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 Mm -hmm. lightly. Any other? That is um, vocabulary that we are going to be using on the next activity. Any other question before we continue? Teacher, what does it mean melted? Melted. Oh, melted. Melting better. Uh huh. Man derretida. Mm -hmm. ah, okay. Uh huh. Eso es derretir. O derretido, como está en pasado, derretido. Melted, derretida, se refiere a la mantequilla. Two tablespoons butter, melted. Any other question? Mm. 
No, teacher. It's okay. Um, it's okay. Hey, do you think it is a healthy snack? What do you think? Do you think that this is a healthy snack? I think so. I didn't I didn't think so. Uh probably the ingredients are healthy, but the method <laughs> because it's fried. So but yeah, it sounds delicious. Okay, let me continue sharing from here. Okay, uh, now as you can see, we have uh, the sequence adverbs and we have some examples here. Uh, as we know, we can use first, and we have the example here, mix uh, peanut butter and banana together. Then, Toast the slices of bread. Next, spread the mixture on the toast. After that, put a sandwich in a pan with butter. Finally, fry the sandwich until it's brown on both sides. Okay, now let's see. We have some pictures here on the right side of the screen, you can see some pictures, right? Here is a receipt for glitter kebabs. Look at the picture and number the steps from one to five, and then add a sequence advert to each step. We have put the meat and vegetables on the skewers, put charcoal in the grill and light it, take the kebabs of the grill and enjoy, Put the kebabs on the grill and cook for 10 to 15 minutes, turning them over from time to time. And cook, cut up some meat and vegetables, marinate them for 20 minutes in your favorite sauce. The number, well, the first step is uh, done for us. First, put charcoal in the grill and light it. Uh-huh which is the, the picture number one. Then I would say that is number two or next. Then, mm -hmm. then cook up some meat and vegetable, marinate them for 20 minutes in your favorite sauce. Yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Next, put the meat and vegetable on the showers. Aha, uh -huh. put the meat and vegetables on the skewers. Uh huh. Then after, after that, that, after that, put the kebabs on the grill and cook for ten to fifteen minutes, turning them over for over from time to time. Mm -hmm. And finally, put the meat and vegetable on the skewers. Uh huh. And then finally, I start the keywords of the grill and enjoy. Uh -huh. Finally, take the keywords of the grill and enjoy. So, yes, good job with this. Uh, now, questions? Now, we have another receipt here. Spicy salsa. Who wants to read this receipt? The ingredients or all the receipt? All the receipt. Okay, spicy salsa. Half an onion, five tomatoes, 
salt and pepper, two chili peppers, a small bunch of cilantro, one lemon. First, chop the onion, chili peppers, tomatoes, and cilantro. Put in a bowl. Next, add salt and pepper. Pepper. Then, pepper. Then, squeeze some fresh lemon. You use in the bowl. After that, mix everything together and refrigerate. Refrigerate. For refrigerate. One hour. Mm -hmm. Refrigerate one, for one hour. And enjoy with tortilla chips. Tortilla chips. Okay, thank you so much, Merlin. Do we have new vocabulary here? Bulge is the same as um, como manojo o algo así. Bunch, uh huh, manojo. Uh, okay, that's correct. Any other question? No question, teacher. No questions. Okay. Do you think this is an easy receipt? Is it easy or sounds difficult to make? So so. So so. Yes. The difficult thing here is shopping, right? Estar picando, cortando, picando. So it's like the most difficult thing here. Okay, uh, in this, we are just getting ideas and vocabulary because tomorrow we will prepare our all receipt using the sequence words, okay? So all this is going to be useful for tomorrow's class. So by now, that will be it. And thank you so much for joining today's section. Remember, remember, remember to please uh, work on the platform. Uh, some of you are still missing the section number one. Aún hay algunos que les faltan los ejercicios de la sección uno. Y recuérdense que ya estamos en la dos y tienen que ir adelantados en la plataforma. Any question, any help that you need, please do not hesitate on texting via the WhatsApp group and we can help you out with the exercises. So thank you so much and see you tomorrow. See you. Good night. Thank you, teacher. Good night. See you tomorrow. Have a good night, teacher. See you tomorrow. Good night, teacher. See everybody. Good night.